We are live. We are live. So we are going to talk about money mantras. Money mantras. So um, when I heard this word, I was I was kind of like, what is a mantra? A mantra, a mantra. So today we're going to talk about money mantras that keep us focused and positive. Nonetheless, how are you guys doing? Let us go ahead and get started. We are going to talk about sharing. Um, we're going to. Sh- I'm going to share some money mantras with you that you can use to keep focused and stay positive, right? So um, with that being said, let us dive into what a mantra actually is is right so what i have here is the definition a mantra is a word a phrase or sound repeated to aid in concentration meditation or as an affirmation of a positive belief or intention now sounds like a mouthful because as i read it i was like oh my goodness like we can break down every single one of those words and apply them to our life situations and everything right so a mantra is a word what word can we continue to say over and over again even in tight situations it can be even when we're thinking about um um i don't know something that may trigger a stressor in our life but um but what it does is it is um it keeps your mind focused like sometimes i would think people had like a tick like you know how somebody does something repeatedly and so i would think like okay that'll be a tick like rubbing your fingers or playing with your um playing with your hands i often chew my tongue so um that can be something that keeps you focused or is a is a sign to know that you are really focused and are thinking about one particular thing, right? So it'll um it's something that can it can be a way to calm you down. Um I just looked out the window. It is so smoky. So um, it can be a way to calm you down, clarity, give you clarity, empower you, give you strength. It can keep you um, focused or or calm like um, like I discuss here in my, let me see here, in, in my, here it is, in my Rise Above Rage membership group. So um, this uh, membership is all about overcoming your there is no no limit the way God can provide for you right and that brings me to this first scripture here which is uh, all right trust in the Lord's provision and timing from Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I know you know that scripture like I do. So I was able to finish it right. So um, let me just get back down here because I got to do it one by one. All right, there it is all on one. Um, trust in the Lord, provision and timing. Trust in him. I have like a, um, I mentioned earlier this month how I was waiting. I'm waiting on some money from an, um, uh, um, some work that I did early on in February and March, right? Totally forgot about payment for it. Totally forgot, but did the payment. I mean, did the work. And um, the company contacted me and was like, hey, we got this money for you. Now it's, you know, they're trying to get their books together and release this money onto me. So finally, the money is released. Finally, the money is coming. And I'm so excited for this job that I did. However, it's taken a long time, right? But it's right on time. Meaning it's the Lord's provision and timing. I'll be able to do some things that I've been wanting to do, right? And it's, it's just going to speed up the time frame to get it done. Instead of waiting for um, another couple of months to do what I wanted to do, I can do it now. I can get it done, right? Even when the clients come in, even when the workload gets heavier, right? It is God's timing and he provides the provision for it. He provides that timing for it. Like I've been like um, getting work done for my clients, getting work done even for myself and building and creating my website, right? Getting my memberships completed, right? I'm so excited because the work I've, I've, I've been able to actually they manifest into is tangible now my memberships and I'm so so excited about it that I am releasing those soon right so these are the um 
memberships here. So you have the Rise Above Rage, my um, Rise Above membership, Broke to Kingdom Financier membership, as well as my Inner Coach's Journey membership, right? So I have three that are available, four that are coming, but three that are available that will be available this month. They are coming soon, right? So each of them have a Facebook group. Each of them provide different things inside of them that you can have and get done, right? And, um... So these are the memberships. I do have a total of four of them, but three are launching this this month. So can you imagine the workload that that has been, the creativity and the the um, startup for all of those things? And it has been, it's a lot of content, guys, a lot of content. But God has given me provision. That means he's given me the time. He's given me the mindset. He's given me the strength. He's given me the will. He's given me the zeal. He's given me the energy, right? He's given me the mindset to stay focused. He's given me the energy and the zeal to actually keep waking up and saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I actually want to finish and complete it and provide it to others, right? I want to move forward and share what God has given me with others. Amen. So with that being said, trusting in the process, trusting in the timing and trusting in his provision for that vision. And this quarter, I always have been saying, I posted in the several groups that I'm in and I'm just like to several people like, hey, this last quarter is my quarter. This last quarter is me. I'm going out. This is going to be the best quarter of my life, right? The third quarter was pretty good for me. It was pretty, pretty good. It was above financial with my business. It was good. The business picked up, started booming. It is great. This last quarter is going to even surpass um, my last quarter. That is just upward and going, moving forward, right? Never, never stopping. Never, never stopping, right? So the next one is um, number two here. Let me see. All right. Number two says... See if it gets it all on there. I am a faithful steward of God's blessings. Corinthians 4 and 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Now, one thing I got up this morning, I was looking at my house and I was like, okay, this is my last quarter. So in the first quarter of next year, I plan on moving. Me and the baby, we are going to move, right? And in doing so, I looked around this house and I said, you know what, God, if I can't keep this, one, I don't have a problem. I, I, my house is, uh, you know, everybody vet for their house and say, yeah, they keep it clean and things like that. Right. And I'm um, like, I told my family, you can come over at midnight. You're going to see my house looking the same way. Cause I had a family member come over and she was like, wow, like, wow. Like you did this. Cause we came We you, you knew we were coming. No. You come on my house at midnight and it looks like this, right? So I was so grateful because I stand on that. Like, I believe that God placed me here in this where I live, where me and Sophia are right now. And so I always remind him and let him know as the scripture said, I'm a good steward over what you've given me, Lord. So I know greater is there. And so I was just this morning saying, wow, if I couldn't keep this, this size clean, then what am I going to do with the next size, Right. And I was just like, wow, like, but I have been keeping this clean. So I was just laughing with God because I was just doing everything. The baby was, um, do, you know, yesterday I just really did some more um, cleaning around the house because I just took a few days off. I was just like, you know, I just took a few days off and running around my house and doing things. And then I was just like, you know, it's time to get back on it. And I just told God like this morning, like if I couldn't keep, if I can't keep this clean, if I can't keep this together, then what, what, what am I going to do with the next one? You don't get elevated. You have to be a good steward. So when it comes to God's blessings, when it comes to your business, how are you running your business? If it's a service base, how are you providing service to your clients? If it's a product base, how are you providing products to your clients? Are there more? You can't please everybody for sure, right? But those people you can't you can't please, you can also learn from that, right? You learn from every opportunity. And just last week, I had a client tell me she was not satisfied with the terms that were set in place, right? And there was a cutoff date and it was three, it was three weeks after the um, initial, initial sessions, right? The initial session, and so once everything was the service, it was a digital creative package. So a part of that package, you get access to certain things that I have that I pay for. And I bring you on as a team member so you can have full access to them. Right. So when it, in that when that access ran out, 
then there was that was something that she was motivated into now logging on and doing but the access was no longer there for her and she voiced that to me and i just you know we talked about it and i was like well this is the terms and it boiled down to this is my business this is how i run my business i open up my doors and i give you access to as much as i can to get you to your goal as a coach get you to your end goal right and so in doing so, when that end goal came and it reached the end for her, that was that fear of missing out that just encompassed her so greatly. Like, oh, I can't do anything now. I can't do this right now. I can't do. And I was like, yes, you can. And guess what? Within a week, she did more than she had done the whole prior three weeks. So that one month, all everything boiled down to getting done in the last week. And it was perfect timing because her mindset was ready. Nothing else, everything was decluttered over those weeks when this taking time, getting things done. But that last week after that access was removed, that last week that we had together, we only had one last week together because the access was removed the um, on week three. But on week four, that's when everything got done. Why? Because the services and the access to me was also leaving. That coach, like, oh, this is it. The services that um, were um, acquired or paid for are now no longer going to be available after this date. You have seven days, right? It was six, six, six days, six days left. And she did more in those six days. And some people do. I know I have done last minute things, right? Even when I wrote my first book got down to the last moment, the last straw crunch time. And, um, the church had the event and I was just like, I can do this. So I did it. Right. But it was that, that push, that thrive, that drive. When you at the end of that marathon, you see that finish, that finish line, right? Cause you've just been running a marathon slowly with your business, running a marathon, slowly getting things done. Right. And then when you see that finish line, you just sprint. You just go, 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 go. So that is not in vain for her to feel that way. I do things like that as well. I give myself deadlines and I wait till the deadline to get it done, right? The same thing that happens. Now, that is, it can be a stressor if it's a continued thing, but for on and off with balancing it and, and that release of pressure after everything is done, it's fine. It's fine. Life happens, right? It's fine once the event is done. The launch is there, right? So um, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. If you say you're going to launch at a certain day, launch. And if you can't, your faithfulness still is moving that date, right? Continue moving forward. As I always say, as you go, you grow. So you continue moving forward and you're still being faithful, right? You're still being faithful. You have not stopped in the name of Jesus. So our next one is number three, and it is about sowing. You know, I'm always talking about giving and sowing, right? Even as I um, grow and so does my business, I never slack on releasing from my hand. It says, I sow generously and reap bountifully. That is a mantra that you constantly say to yourself, right? I have a check written on my wall, print out a big check from online, a blank check, and I filled it in and it is the size of eight and a half by 11. And I put it up on my wall with the amount. I would put the bonuses on there. I put the... um the holiday bonuses as though I was getting paid from a um, business or a job. I put the bonuses, I put how it's gonna come in, I put the dates on there and I wrote the name of the company and in the endless pot that I know it was coming from. And so those are things that I put on my wall and filled in that check, right? So in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So if you have, if you have, you're continuously, now that bountifully doesn't mean that you just have to give a one-time lump sum to make it bountifully no your bountiful giving is simply giving you can be continuously giving 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 but if you're sowing sparingly when you are able to give bountifully that makes a difference as well right also what makes a difference is um your mindset because god loves a cheerful giver giver so think about how if you're giving um 
grudgingly, even though God does talk about giving grudgingly, you still blessed upon your giving, right? Because the giving is it, but he doesn't, sometimes the place of the heart does not matter how it's, um, it's done, but God does love a cheerful giver, right? And also the energy that you are releasing it with. You don't want to give something and the money is now has hate a tie, tied to it or anger, right? That's why I have that membership, Rise Above Rage membership, right? I have it. It is, um, the Facebook group is available and it is growing, right? So I thank God for that. However, it says, but I, this I say, which he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So I'm not saying that I want to remove God's word, but something I don't want you to focus on if you are thinking, oh, I give sparingly. No, focus on he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Just always think about when you are giving and sowing that you are doing it that this is your bountiful out of your bountifulness, your abundance, right? Your greatness, right? That is what you're giving. Even when you're doing work unto the Lord or providing services and products for your clients, right? Then know that you are giving them everything that you have. You are giving them a piece of everything that you have. You are not holding back. You are never, ever holding back. Amen. So our next one is number four and it says God's abundance flows to me from unexpected sources and unexpected mean, yeah, it may be an avenue that you have created. Like I have multiple streams of ways for money to make it to me. Right. And I said, wow, I have them in place and I've had stores in place still paying for them. And only this year they made their first sale. I never closed them down. What God has told me to do, I just sit and wait. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. But you know I've had that store up, and I looked at the value of it this morning. It has increased. Why? Because that store is still up and running. The value for me to sell that store has increased because of the length of time that it's been open. Can you imagine your value increasing just because the time that it's been in business and been in good standing? Hallelujah. I looked at it this morning and I was like, wow, God, it's going up. That's why I tell people I had a, a, a prospective client a couple of weeks ago and I did not take her. I did not take her because the vetting process I realized just was not going to work out. So I did not bring her on as a client. However, one of the things was she was since for the last, this is 23 since 2014, I think it was. She's always starting, starting, starting. And then if it doesn't yield immediate results, she's always quitting. So when I asked that question at the end of all these adventures and the shifts that she's done, and I said, well, what do you have actually now open and running for a stream of income that you can use and just send people to? And she said nothing. She had closed everything. And that was when I made the decision right there. I'm not putting my hand in that. I am not giving my time and in, in, investing myself into that paid or not. It was paid. But I was like, no, I'm not doing it because why? I see her mindset. She's a quick, get quick, rich scheme thing. And here it is from 2014 to 23 and nothing is open. But many things have been created. Much knowledge she speaks with and zeal of beginning stages of everything, but no finish stages, no continuation stages. And when I recognized that, I said, no, I'm not getting involved. Once you actually stick with something and stay with something, come back to me. And just keep going from person to person and coach to coach. She's had many. She has some now. Then that is it. So I had to make the financial executive decision. Do I, I'd always say, if you go to my website, this is not for you. If And in my um, character dominant training, I, I teach that. And I say, I don't just keep clients around for a dollar. I don't. I don't want your business just for you to just say, hey, the dollar. No, I need to vet you. I have the free discovery calls set up. I have the, um, you can set up and, 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 and we can talk about it. We can do some things. So when I did that, I just vet and I say, nah, we're not, I'm not the quite the coach for you. Right. But don't stop. Keep going. Right. So, and this is, um, my scripture here that you see that I opened up with, but my God shall supply all your need. So this is the God of you. You take this and you say my God. So this is 
um, Paul teaching the Philippians that his God shall supply all of their need according to his riches. And you know, God's riches are innumerable, right? So with that being said, the God of my man of God, shall supply all of money as Paul was their spiritual father. So I have my spiritual father and you know, and I speak of him often. He is a multimillionaire. He is an ambassador, right? He is a prophet, right? He has multiple businesses. And right now this weekend, he has, um, a leadership event conference that he is putting on right now in Africa, teaching leaders how to lead, teaching business information, giving out his his startups and how his wife started. And this was just in 2007 where things started moving and 2010, everything started showing. It took some time after starting and everything now, multimillionaire, Forbes magazine, um, property over 300 properties worldwide like businesses and businesses and businesses like so many businesses right multiple streams of income and i'm so grateful for having that mentor spiritually spiritually and um naturally right so as it says but the god of prophet hubert angel shall supply all of my need according to to his riches, the God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus, right? I am so grateful for that. For I am so, so grateful, right? So that is a mantra that I start for because every time you take that and, and my man of God says, God provides provision for your vision. And if you don't have provision for your vision, you need to go back to revision, right? You need to go back to the one who gave you that vision so that you can revise it, line it up, Step by step, precept on precept, line upon line, right? Get that sorted out and watch the provision come in, right? I'm telling you, we as Christians, we are not left hanging. God does not leave us hanging. So number five, I am blessed to be a blessing to others. This is thrown in there because as you make it, you want to uplift those with you, right? You want to bring people with you, right? You want to share that. You get on another level, another tax bracket. You enter another realm, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work, right? That ye, that you, that you, this is so personal, right? To the Corinthians and it says, God is able to make all grace. Do you know what grace is? It is unmerited favor. That means favor you don't deserve. It is salvation, right? Like God didn't even come down here for us Gentiles. We, if you're not a Jew, right? He came to his lost sheep, which are the Jews. But because they did not receive him and accept him and desire him nor want him, just like the parable of the wedding, right? He sent for all his friends and none want to come. God told the, the, the king, told this, go out into the highways and the byways and you bring everybody back. You Whoever wants to come to this feast, this wedding, then you let them come. Same thing with salvation, God is saying they didn't want him. So because we are not the result of Jesus Christ's death, crucifixion, we are not the, re we are not the cause of it, but we, we are partakers of the resurrection, right? Because everybody got to be grafted in, right? Everybody, God now, it, it doesn't matter, right? It's a, it's a pot, a, 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 a pot brew. It's like a vegetable soup. Everybody is in there, right? So God is able to make all grace. So that unmerited favor, that salvation, that healing, it's yours. All that grace, all that favor, all that, um, when someone thinks you're special, right? It can be in your job, promotion, relationship. It doesn't matter. The, um, if you're looking for visas, you receive them and you be like, how did this happen? Right. Um, you look at, in the business that, um, actually before they released the money this week, someone called me on a Saturday. A closed day. My file came up before somebody and she called me. She was like, look, it was a Saturday. I was happy. I was happy. I knew it. And I said, God, this is nothing but you. This is nothing but you, right? This business is calling me where she called me from home or wherever. I don't care. But she called to say, hey, I'm looking at everything and everything you have, we have asked for, you have provided. This money is yours. Let us rece release it, right? So all that grace is abounded towards you. Right. And it says that ye that with this grace, you have all sufficiency in all things. 
You were sufficient in your cupboards, in your with your wardrobe, with your cars, your gas. It doesn't matter. Everything is sufficient in the mighty name of Jesus, right? That every good work abounds toward you. Everything that is good, everything that is prosperous. When God tells us to keep our mind stayed on him, it is for things of such that as he blesses us, we bless others. That is how God does it, right? That is, that's just the way it is. That is salvation. That is his son, Jesus Christ. As he has blessed us with Jesus Christ, we continue to bless, right? That's why with our businesses, we grow. I was just um, talking to a partner and I was just like, hey, you know, this is where I'm standing. This is where I'm starting. And then my coach was teaching a couple of weeks ago on going up, growing, right? As you continue to grow, so does your value. When your value increases, so do your services and your product prices, right? Some things you just continue to grow in. And I was sitting there and I woke up this morning and I was praying, I was talking to God and I received the increase as my value has increased. As I looked at my store, remember I said my store value increased. It's been open for two years and I never made a sale until this year. And then that store, um, that store's value has increased because it's been open. That business has been open and running for over two years. Its value has increased. So I said, Lord, even with the knowledge that I have, even as I continue to grow and learn as I'm now in a, um, another course for a certificate up for coaching, right? I paid for this course that I am attending to be a better coach. And I said, okay. According to the coach, the the certifications to actually um, be coaching here in in America and in, in, in Maryland, and so I said, okay, as that my value increases because I am I'm valuing myself. I'm paying for this course. I'm paying for this certification. I'm praying. I'm paying to be registered and licensed to coach professionally where I'll be on the certain the national registry for coaches, right? I am increasing my value. Do you think that my coaching prices will remain the same? They will not. What is at my website right now at coachalwanza.org will not remain the same. As I graduate and my name is added and I pass this course and take this test, as I invest in myself, then my value increases. So everything will be shifting as I grow as well. Everything will be shifting. And that's why I'm grateful for as I bless, I bless others too, right? I give, I create with my hands, right? What's in here? The tools provided for every single client. Everything is personal. Everything is separate. Some of the things in books that I have created were because the leading, the guidance, and the direction of the pool that my client had on me. This is where I'm going. They might say, this is where I'm going. This is what I need. And immediately I'll know this is the type of planner journal. This is the type of book that they need. This is the type of content that they need. And every single client that has stirred me, provoked and provoked me to write a book, I have given it unto them as I have blessed them with it for free. They do not receive it. And I say, oh, I wrote this book inspired by you. Now go pay for it. No, I give it to them, right? That has happened more than once. And I thank God because I didn't get here by myself. So with that all being said, I am so grateful. So with the mantra, let's go back up here to the definition because I want everyone to know exactly what a mantra is. And it says it is a word, phrase, or sound repeated to aid in concentration, meditation, or as an affirmation of a positive belief or intention. Do you see that? positive belief. So if you're having negative beliefs going on, right, then you can't call what you're saying is a mantra. It just does not fit the profile, right? So you have to know that that word, that phrase, that, um, that, um, affirmation, that declaration, that decree that you were, um, declaring over your life every single day has to be positive, has to be with good intentions, has to be good, right? Because God makes all things um, abound towards you, right? For the good, for every good work, right? May abound to you for every good work. So now in context of financial mantras, they are affirmations or phrases that help individuals maintain a positive, again, that word positive, right? And constructive mindset about their financial goals and belief. Constructive. You know what construction is? You have a foundation, then you build up work, right? You start with the um, 
with the um the walls right the strength the the um if it's wood it's the two by fours the framing of everything the strength of the walls right you have the um headers and the strength going up then as you continue continue to go up before you fill in right so this is the same thing with a constructive mindset you have to start at a base a foundation and then build up you write things down I told you yesterday, this, this, this book right here is my vision board and it's nice and it's thick and I've touched it how many times putting it together, right? This, this is what I'm saying about being constructive. You have to build and have a foundation. So what was in my head, right? What was in my head? I pulled it out, put it in black and white, went through it on the computer tediously printed it out and still found things to add to it, take away from it, where to put it. These are things that I have done myself that I am constructing right now to make it accessible to you because everything that I do with my hands are blessed and I continue to create and make it that you may have it. Amen. So with that being said, all, if you haven't already head on over and join the wait list for these, um, for my, groups join the wait list for my groups and while you're over there you can go to um when you go to moneyismental.org you'll see the wait list for the um you'll have the option for the wait list for the groups the facebook groups you also have the option for the wait list to join when the um when my courses my memberships go live right so right now the facebook groups are all open and you can join for free. You can just join. Join the wait list and I'll let you in. However, they are closing on the 20th and they will only be accessible via membership. So see, that is something that I am incorporating and building and strengthening right now, right? So look forward to those posts. Those posts are coming out on my social media pages and I will explain them later, but they are the right now everything is open and it's accessible and it's free through via the Facebook groups. And in the Facebook groups, you actually get to con some content for free that is only for memberships, right? You don't have to pay for them from my website. You can get them for free, download them and just keep it moving, right? But on the 20th, everything goes, um, everything locks down and closes and only will be accessible via memberships. So if you haven't already, if you like a, a book that you see at alwanza.org slash shop, you like it from there, it may be in the groups already. Go on over there, like those groups on my Facebook page, like those groups and get your free books. But on the 20th, everything will only be accessible via the um via membership right and if my service is something that you enjoy and if you're liking these lives you want to connect have um um uh, a coach to help you connect the dots to your success then head on over to coachawanza.org there are services and packages over there for you i'm sure one will be one for you you can do individual one-on-ones or you can do packages for um multiple sessions right and we also have this book, this group right here. Join this group under files. Download these free planners and things that I have right here for you that you can have for free. Otherwise, on the 20th, the group closes. Only be accessible via membership. So I love you guys. That brings us to the end. And um, until next time, head on over to alwanza.org and moneyismental.org. Love you guys. Alwanza out.